Scotty, like I was at a point where I was teaching martial arts for my brother, going to Columbia full time. I was working at Starbucks so my family would have health insurance. Pretty much any time I was driving in the car, I felt like I was gonna fall asleep. Yo, what is up guys? Thank you so much for your patience. I appreciate it. Uh, train was delayed and then it was it was one of those mornings where everything was just going a little crazy, but that's all right. I am happy to be here with you guys. Um, as you guys are jumping on, uh, what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to comment with your favorite toy from when you were a kid. All right, so for me guys, like I was all about my X-Men action figures. That's where it was. A Wolverine with the claws that popped out. That's, all day, every day, right? So what I wanted to go over today was Facebook Live videos. Um, the, the problem is, guys, there's like 95% of martial arts schools that are not doing Facebook Live videos, and there is no reason to not be doing Facebook Live videos. It is like the easiest way to deliver value to your audience and to generate engagement, so that way you can warm up your audience and make it easier to actually do the sale. All right, let's jump into it, guys. So we're gonna go over some tips. All right, number one, I'm giving you topics, but they're suggestions, right? You have to be yourself. If you don't feel confident talking about a specific topic, then you're gonna come off as really awkward when you talk about it in the Facebook Live video, right? So you have to talk about what you know and what you're comfortable with. Okay, number two, you have to be a storyteller. Our audiences find it way easier to connect with you if you're able to relate the topic to a story about yourself or a story about a student at your school because then they can sort of picture their child overcoming that same thing, right? Thank you guys, have an awesome day, and crush it this week. All right, that looked good. You know what's really crazy is some of the people that like, I used to look up to when I was like starting training, like Chris Casamasa and like Carlos Machado, people that like I'm actually working with now, which is like awesome. Yeah, you're gonna write yeah, well. Good luck. Sorry, like Kevin, oh, Kevin. Shit, Kevin. Well, don't die, Kevin. <laughs> you know what I like today in the conversation with Nick? Like how he was talking about how driving is losing him money because yeah, he can come dope. up because he can come up with ideas. That's like really true though, man. Like um, that's why I used to like taking the train uh, downtown all the time because I would like sit there and get like a shit ton of work done or like homework when I was in school. So the, first, really so the first couple of times we came down here for lunch, we walked into Freshie both times and left and went to the pizza place. <laughs> All right. So um, what I would do is at the end of the parents' night out, be like, uh, when the parents come to pick the kids up, just be like, hey kids, you guys have a great time? And they all go crazy and say, yeah, right? And then be like, hey parents, really quick before you leave, I know some of you guys are tired. Since your kids behave so well and we're such great listeners, what I want to do is I want to give you guys half off of our trial membership. So it's usually like six weeks for $69. We'll do uh, six weeks for $34.50. And the best part is it's a money back guarantee. So if you guys try it and you don't like it, there's no risk. We'll, we'll refund your money if you feel like it's not a good fit for you. All right, you, you too. See ya. Cool, so I think that's pretty good. I think uh, one of the things I'm finding out with a lot of school owners is they either don't have goals or they set goals based on like their limitations. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of times they'll be like, well, I think I can get 10 new students this month. So that's going to be my goal. I was like, well, that's awesome, but like, what do you need your goal to be so you can actually like grow? Like setting it based on like what you think you can get doesn't mean that your school is going to be growing. Getting people to understand the mindset of like, hey, it's not like what I think I can get, but what's the number that I want to be at so I can continue growing and like actually build up a business where I don't have to be there every freaking day. I, w I was telling Scotty, like I was at a point where I was teaching martial arts for my brother, going to Columbia full time. I was working at Starbucks so my family would have health insurance. P pretty much any time I was driving in the car, I felt like I was gonna fall asleep. And there's like sometimes I would just like wake up like driving home because like I was so like down on like no sleep and it, it just got to the point like I was doing all that because I wanted to provide for my family and I wanted to sort of get out of the position that I was in. So I just, I like had to just make a decision pretty much like am I gonna, do I want to keep doing this? And Nick, my business mentor, he's like, do you like this? Do you want to keep doing this for the rest of life? And I was like, hell no. Yeah, that was a big part of it, but best decision I ever made, man. Never, I would never go back on that. Classroom tip of the week, training floor tip of the week, classroom hack of the week. Scotty! 
not getting any work done. Should I call it the classroom tip of the week, training floor tip of the week, classroom hack of the week? Hack is over. Well, is this geared more towards- It's all classroom stuff. It's all like teaching stuff? Yeah. Then do classroom tip of the week, because like training floor is like, it could be like, oh, well, you're training. Or it could be like instructor, we just call it the teaching tip of the week. Some of it's not all teaching though. Level up your training floor. It's not stealing, it's just, I'm Maybe if I just look at titles of some of the other books, something to like spark. This week's Tuesday teaching tactic is the pre-frame. How's it going? Yeah, no worries. Summer nights, they stay all on my mind. Gotta let it breathe, gotta let it breathe like this. Leaving you in tune with my crooked soul. Chicago nights, they Great Scott, time is running out! So take your. I just messed it up too. Have hugs. I got Hi. <laughs> Scotty, what? You met Ali? What are you going to buy with your money? What? <laughs> 50, oh, you're going to buy $50? Yeah, that's a smart kid trying to turn his two dollars into fifty dollars. You gonna buy some Bitcoin? Yeah. One of the things that that is really like an awesome way to add value. We have one week where the instructor will send an audio message through Facebook Messenger to the mom, and they pretty much just say like, "Hey, Mrs. Smith, I was hoping to catch Johnny after class, but it was just a little crazy. I couldn't get to him, but I just wanted to play this for him so you can hear it." And then you say. Johnny, man, I was so proud of you in class. I wish I had a, a chance to tell you afterwards. You were one of the fastest people in class with your attention stance today. And I can tell that if you keep that up, you're gonna be an outstanding black belt leader. I am so proud of you. Keep it up and I can't wait to see you next class. That's an awesome idea. All right, I'm gonna pee and then we can uh, rock. The thing I like about it is it's not like a work meeting, but even though you're connected through work, it's just like, finding out about them, what their passions are, and like what challenges they're going through, and really just sort of connecting them on, on a level that just breeds trust and just like enhances the relationship that you guys have. And it's amazing how much like meetings like that can really bring like an entire team together just because you, you start to get th things out of people and you start to like realize who that person actually is. You just develop way more empathy that way. Like if, if they're struggling with something or if there's like a misunderstanding, it's a lot easier to see it from their perspective because you know them a lot better now. Nights like this, I knew you wanted my soul. Nights like this, I knew you wanted my soul. Nights I knew you Stop here and grab it real quick. I want to see the worst flyer ever. Look at that Photoshop job. They put his head on a different body, it looks like his neck's broken. <laughs> Isn't that the worst thing you've ever seen? It's never too late to cut off your chains, baby. Cut off your bank, you don't know my ways, baby. But I know one thing, that we can be on, we can be on. How's the new location going? It's going. That was awesome. I, I, I was excited when I saw you open that. I actually, I actually was uh, telling him I went and took class at the ILKB by us. It's hard. So the first, the 15, first 15 <laughs> first minutes is tough. Suck, dude. Like, yeah. I, I'm, I did the same and I'm, 
been working out a little bit. I'm like, Jesus. This the is rest of the class was pretty good. I brought, so I brought Scotty with us that yeah. works for me. He did like just started going to the gym like somewhat consistently. And like there's multiple times during the class where he's like, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then like he left like halfway in the class. He like leaves the mat for a little bit. I was like, I bet you he's puking. Like he's probably, he's probably throwing up. He came back, he's like, I was a puke kid. I was like, all right. Uh, but yeah, I will say, I thought the uh, onboarding was good. I thought uh, the atmosphere was good. Like it was like a party, like when you walked in, like the music playing. They're doing like a black tie event on Monday, like for DJ night, where everyone like comes in like suits and tuxedos and- And trains in that. But yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna get the tuxedo print shirt. <laughs> <laughs> this is the golden moment. I bring the honor off. Just another day with Adam Kiefer. Not just a DJ, bro. Yeah. Woo! Some skills. So we're trying to come up with a nickname for Kevin. Because Gary Vee's got Babin and like D-Rock. So we're, we're brainstorming the, nothing good so far for nicknames. Are you kidding me? We got great ideas. I, I said Kevlar, yeah? I think, I think he should just be called Gary Vaynerchuk. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty awesome. There's whole websites about nicknames for Kevin. Like, we are not the only people struggling with a Kevin nickname. Like, this is like, oh, this is baby names and then nicknames for Kevin. <laughs> K-Clips? K-Clips. K-Clips. It's actually not that bad. What do you guys think? You guys should- Leave your suggestions in the comments below. <laughs> we, should, we, should have, we should have a vote on Kevin's nickname. I don't know if that's fair to Kevin though, because like Kevin's like, I had no decision in this. Oh, he decides, he's the editor. He decides and everything. With our audience, you're gonna end up being nicknamed Chuck Norris. I think we should let the audience decide. You guys let us know if you guys think hey, Kevin should be called K-Clips. I almost called you K-Clips right there. Or if there's something better that we should nickname Kevin. Cameraman's gotta have a nickname. All right, let us know.